Hello, welcome to the Monday, October 29th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Denver, Colorado. We got a couple of interesting diaries to talk about from this weekend. First one by Xavier about dissecting malicious office documents with Linux. The trick here is to install many of the tools that are really usually used on Windows on Linux. Well, Microsoft made that a lot easier by, for example, offering PowerShell for Linux. Also, the Mono Toolkit essentially implements .NET for Linux. So with this this, you really sort of get a little mini Windows environment together that you can then use in order to analyze Office documents. The advantage here, of course, is that you do have a little bit more access typically in Linux and also more scripting tools, more traditional scripting tools, I should say, in order to automate some of the analysis. And Didier introduced a new tool in order to deal with compressed RTF documents. So if you have one that you need to analyze, take a look at Didier's blog post. And then we have a new vulnerability in system D. This vulnerability can be exploited via a malicious DHCP v6 response. It's a heap buffer overflow and well, of course, can be used to execute arbitrary code as root. Now, system D has often been criticized for trying really to do too much in one package, configuring your network and sort of a replacement for the entire network configuration process is really just one of the things that systemd does. It also replaces your overall startup system on Linux systems. Sadly, we had a number of critical vulnerabilities in system D in the past, but given its central role for many Linux distributions, you can't easily turn it off or switch to some of the older alternatives. And according to Trend Micro, attackers are actively searching for misconfigured Docker and Engine community that expose the Docker API. Now, this is typically exposed on port 2375 as well as 2376 and these are the ports where Trend Micro saw all this scanning happening. Now once they find an exposed system they and that's kind of typical these days install cryptocurrency mining malware. The problem being exploited here is not so much a vulnerability, but a misconfiguration. There are actually specific security features, as Trend Micro points out, that a user can enable in order to protect their Docker setup. And this also in particular affects the community version, not the enterprise version of this product. The API itself is typically used by users of Docker to allow for remote control of respective Docker containers. A victim actually has to specifically expose this API. So this is also not a default configuration of the affected systems, but victims willingly expose the API without enabling respective security features, which then led to the compromise. Now talk about botnets scanning for new victims. According to Ratware, another target is Hadoop. Now Hadoop is typically used for big data analytics and in some ways it's sort of the big data engine. It's nothing you typically find sort of your average user using. It does take some effort to set up, but in March a new vulnerability was discovered in Hadoop that is now apparently being abused in order to install the daemon bot. For a change, the daemon bot is not after cryptocurrency. Instead, it is out for denial of service attacks. And of course, the typically massive amount of resources that you get in a Hadoop cluster is somewhat attractive to attackers that are trying to launch denial of service attacks. Radware observed a couple of variations of the daemon bot trying to take advantage of Hadoop. So, well, make sure if you run Hadoop to appropriately secure and patch it. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.